The world's largest and most powerful space telescope has revealed unprecedented views of Jupiter. Well, not only is Jupiter the largest planet in our solar system, it's now also the planet with the most moons. At $10 billion, the James Webb Telescope has been more than worth its price tag, delivering exquisite views of the cosmos from neighboring planets to celestial bodies billions of light years away. Sure, the amount spent is a hefty one, but when you balance out how much it's worth with the data and images it has sent back, it's easy to see why it's worth it. Parked at around 1.5 million kilometers or 1 million miles away from the Earth, the JWST is placed at an optimum range to photograph everything around us and almost everything else beyond that. NASA has now, with the sheer incredible clarity of the James Webb Telescope, released new ultra-lucid images of the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. JWST has already taken pictures of galaxies that are so far away from Earth that cosmic expansion has moved their light into the infrared part of the spectrum. And the observatory's near-infrared spectrograph, or INR spec, has even found carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of WASP-39b, the first time this gas has been found in a planet. JWST has also been eyeing a neighbor. On July 27th, astronomers used the telescope's powerful infrared eyes to target Jupiter. The resulting images reveal a planet that is both familiar and unfamiliar. Principal investigator E. Mike DePater of the University of California, Berkeley, in a statement said, We've never seen Jupiter like this. It's all quite remarkable. We hadn't really expected it to be this good. Jupiter is experiencing a variety of weather conditions, including giant storms, powerful winds, auroras, and extreme temperature and pressure conditions. New images of the planet have been captured by the James Webb Space Telescope that's shining new light on the previously unknown. Scientists have even greater insight into Jupiter's inner life with Webb's Jupiter observations. Amike de Pater further expressed her excitement saying, We hadn't really expected it to be this good, to be honest. It's really remarkable that we can see details on Jupiter together with its rings, tiny satellites, and even galaxies in one image. An international collaboration for Webb's early release science program led to the observations of Jupiter by de Pater and Thierry Fauchet, a professor at the Paris Observatory. NASA and its partners, ESA, or European Space Agency, and CSA, or Canadian Space Agency, are leading the international mission. JWST's near-infrared camera, or NIR cam, captured two images of our solar system's largest planet. In the striking close-up directly above, taken through three different filters, Jupiter displays numerous cloud bands, as well as storms and auroral emissions. The area around the equator is bright white because of the high-altitude haze. The great red spot in Jupiter's southern hemisphere appears as a bright oval for the same reason. Storms that are smaller across the planet appear whitish or reddish. The Cheyenne colors show clouds buried deep in Jupiter's atmosphere, revealing light reflected from the planet's main cloud level at a pressure of about one bar. It also shows the transition between banded structures seen at equatorial and mid-latitude regions that Earthbound observers know so well, and more complex vortices at higher latitudes. The giant's massive auroral ovals appear as reddish glows near the giant's northern and southern poles. There are hydrogen atoms above the cloud tops that emit these emissions. The greenish areas around the poles come from haze in the planet's atmosphere located 60 to 120 miles above the surface. If you look carefully, you can see this haze layer going down the limb to equatorial latitudes. The wide field view of Jupiter combines images through two infrared filters. In this composite photo, the Jovian clouds and aurorae still stand out, but there are many more details. JWST's power is demonstrated by its ability to capture Jupiter's faint and dusty rings in the same image as the bright planet itself, which shines one million times brighter. Two faint inner moons are almost present, Amalthea and Adresti. At the edge of the rings, Adresti appears as a dim dot, whereas Amalthea lies about twice as far from Jupiter's limb. The image also has a rich background of scattered light. Jupiter's aurorae and the bright moon, Io, are the most obvious sources, as they lie just beyond the left-hand edge of the image. The two visible moons are intersected by the latter spike. When light interacts with the struts that support its secondary mirror, diffraction spikes arise in reflecting telescopes like Webb. Scientists think the numerous fuzzy dots are distant galaxies that photobomb the image, which is a more intriguing form of background light. The two images come from the telescope's near-infrared camera, or NIR cam, which has three specialized infrared filters that show details of the planet. 
Since infrared light is invisible to the human eye, it has been put in the visible spectrum. The longest wavelengths appear to be redder, while the shortest wavelengths appear to be more blue. Judy Schmidt and scientists collaborated to translate the web data into images. Several images from Webb's standalone view of Jupiter show aurorae reaching high altitudes above the northern and southern poles of Jupiter. Aurorae are reflected through a filter that is mapped to redder colors, which also highlights light from lower clouds and upper haze. Different filters are used, mapped to yellows and greens to show haze swirls around the northern and southern poles. The light that is reflected from a deeper main cloud is showcased in a third filter. The view shows the Great Red Spot, a famous storm so large it could swallow Earth, as well as other clouds because they are reflecting a lot of sunlight. Heidi Hamill, Webb Interdisciplinary Scientist for Solar System Observations and Vice President for Science at Aurora, said in a statement, The brightness here indicates high altitude, so the Great Red Spot has high altitude hazes, as does the equatorial region. The numerous bright white spots and streaks are likely very high altitude cloud tops of condensed connective storms. Contrastingly, the dark ribbons north of the equatorial region have little cloud cover. Webb views Jupiter from a wide field perspective with its faint rings, which are a million times fainter than the planet, and two tiny moons. The fuzzy spots in the lower background are likely caused by galaxies photobombing this view. Fauci further explained, This one image sums up the science of our Jupiter solar system program, which studies the dynamics and chemistry of Jupiter itself, its rings, and its satellite system. Researchers have already begun analyzing Webb data to get new science results about our solar system's largest planet. The data from telescopes like Webb comes to Earth in a jumble. Instead, it tells us how bright the light is on Webb's detectors. This information comes to the Space Telescope Science Institute, or STSCI, Webb's Mission and Science Operations Center as raw data. The data is then processed into calibrated files for scientific analysis and then delivered to the Mikulski Archive for Space Telescope for dismantation. Scientists use the information to make images like these. While the team at the STSI processes web images for official release, non-professional astronomers called citizen scientists often look into the public data archive to get and process images. Judy Schmidt of Modesto, California, a longtime image processor in the citizen science community, processed these new views of Jupiter. Ricardo Huseo, a co-investigator on these observations, studies planetary atmospheres at the University of the Basque Country in Spain. He collaborated with her to create the image that includes the tiny moons. Schmidt has no formal education in astronomy, but 10 years ago, she became obsessed with the image processing after winning an ESA contest. The Hubble's Hidden Treasures competition asked people to find new gems in Hubble data. Schmidt was third place for an image of a newborn star out of nearly 3,000 submissions. She has been working on Hubble and other telescope data since the ESA contest as a hobby. Her fascination with astronomy led her to process the images of nebulae, globular clusters, stellar nurseries, and other spectacular cosmic objects. Hamill previously collaborated with Schmidt on refining Hubble images of comet shoemaker Levy 9's Jupiter impact. These images have caught the attention of professional scientists, including Hamill. Schmidt says that Jupiter is harder to work with than other cosmic wonders because it rotates so fast. When Jupiter's distinctive features have rotated during the time that the images were taken, it can be challenging to combine a stack of images into one view. Occasionally, she has to adjust the images digitally so that they are placed in a way that makes sense. But if Schmidt had to pick one thing to be excited about, it would be more web views of star-forming regions. She is especially interested in young stars that make powerful jets and her big Haro objects. So what other planets would you like the James Webb Telescope to photograph? Will the James Webb Telescope help us solve more mysteries of our solar system? And what will the JWST discover next? Let us know in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching Space Rumor.